So in today's video, we're talking about Dark Throne, a band from Norway. The band plays black metal, and the album is called Astral Forces. The album was released on Peaceful Records on October 28th, 2022. This is album number 20 in their discography. They've been around for a while, since the early 90s. And uh, let me give a quick history. So the band is currently two members, uh, Fenris and Nocturno Culto. They're basically the core of the bands. Uh, they have been other members like during like the inception, but it's been mostly like these two guys throughout the uh, you know, band's history. They started as a death metal band. Their first album, Soul Side Journey, uh, released in 1991. Then they signed to Peaceville, and then they switched to black metal. Then they released three albums, which in the black metal community, they consider like the unholy trinity of like black metal. So, A Blaze in the Northern Sky, uh, Under a Funeral Moon, and Transylvanian Hunger. Those are just these very raw black metal albums. The production is like very like lo-fi, but it's just uh, it kind of like the, the depicts of what black metal was all about back then. After that, they uh, released uh, Panzer Faust, and if you take a look at the uh, album art here, you're gonna notice that you have a guy. Um, he's ice skating, which kind of weird in a black metal album to have a guy ice skating, but. And on the backpack, it's like a backpack or a shirt or whatever, it's the album Panzerfaust. And I think the band meant to uh, kind of like uh, pay like an homage to that album. I think like this particular album is uh, kind of going back to that particular style. So that is uh, just what I think. So this band has gone through many changes. Like in the uh, 2000s, they moved towards that crust punk. And the more recent albums were like doom metal. So their last album was called Eternal Hails. That was released in 2021. And that was actually my first uh, experience with this band. I never really listened to them before that. And I actually liked that album a lot because it had these like slow, like Black Sabbath style riffs. And I liked that aspect of it. I actually did a review of it. I remember it came out at the same time as that like Pestilence album. So I did like a double review. You can probably look for that on my channel if you like. And now with this album, it's very good. Maybe a little better. It's a continuation of that core sound from that last album. So let's talk about it. There are only uh, seven songs. Uh, the album's 40 minutes. Basically, um, the songs are maybe about like four minutes with one 10-minute song. So let's talk about them. Opening track, Caravan of Broken Ghosts. So best way to describe this song, it's kind of like a roller coaster ride. So it starts with like this folky acoustic guitar. The building like fuzzy sound, um, the guitar tone is very recognizable, We've got this like slow pace. The lyrics are very descriptive, they're dark, they're evil. The vocals are kind of low in the mix, the guitars are more up front. Now the song kind of speeds up around like the three minute mark with some faster pace and guitar riffs. Then it slows down, you got some like those traditional black metal riffs and then it gets fast again with some galloping guitar rhythms and a fast paced guitar riffs. At around five minutes, kind of slows down to a crawl again with some heavy doom metal riffs, and then it picks up again. So, you do get lots of ups and downs on this first track. So, this one's pretty good. Track number two, uh, Impeccable Caverns of Satan. Uh, you get some slow Black Sabbath style riffs, then they add in these like short, like tremolo picked riffs, like at, at the uh, end of the chord progression. So, it's like. Something like that. I'm not really uh, exactly. Uh, singing the, the riff as it is, but it kind of like picks up uh, the pace of the little words and, and then you get that slight like crust punk sound. Uh, you got those same like dark and evil lyrics that you would expect, the slow riffs continue. Kind of reminded me of an old Black Sabbath song, just a very slow, very heavy, distorted riff. So, so then and you get st Stalagmite Necklace and then this one starts with heavy doom riffs and like the others, a little different. This one they add in some keyboards in the background, so that adds kind of like another layer of sound, and I think that worked very well with this song. As a lot of these songs are very like minimalistic at times, you know, a lot of times you just hear like guitar and drum, and like the vocals are really low, and which is cool because you could, you can hear like these guitar riffs as they're being played, like they sound like really clear, but you know sometimes you want a little more, and on this song they give you that little extra. That little uh, bit more of that like keyboard. So I like that. At three minutes to do some more of those like Black Sabbath style riffs and the guitar tone towards the end. It's pretty cool. Kind of sounds like a violin. I don't think it's a violin. I think it's a guitar. But they do that and you know I, I thought it was pretty cool. 
Next, the sea beneath the seas of the sea. Uh, this is the 10 minute song. Uh, this one can drag at times, but I think it's decent. You know, they, they kind of add in enough stuff to kind of keep it interesting. So you get this atmospheric clean guitar riff to start out, then some slow disdained uh, chords. Now the song is mostly moves at a slow pace. You get some slight tempo changes throughout the song. Get some brief guitar solos here and there. Then that chugging guitar sound, it comes in like a few minutes into the song. And then at around six minutes, you, know, you do get this short like drum solo. And then it kind of gets like slower and then like some heavier riffs. They're bringing the keyboards at this point and it kind of creates more of a haunting atmosphere. And, you know, it's long, it's 10 minutes, but it does, it's like, you know, it is interesting enough. So you're not really going to get bored. Then uh, Kevorkian Times, this one starts with like slow and heavy riffs and... I like the main guitar on this one, the main guitar riff. It's a little more complex. It kind of makes those like slow riffs with that like tremolo picking. Then you do get some tempo changes on the song. And then at the halfway mark, it does kind of get a little fast. And then they kind of slow it. And then, you know, they kind of do it all throughout the album. They kind of get fast and slow. Then uh, there's this uh, instrumental. It's two minutes called, called Bolton West of the Vast Forest. Um, it's just very slow, atmospheric. Um, you get slow, slow guitar notes picked with like this echo sound and you get some drum rolls here and there, but that's about all you get. Final song, Eon 2. This one's a little more mid-paced, get a little more of that like heavy metal gallop. Uh, now the riffs in this one kind of reminded me of like uh, Iron Maiden with their like early 80s albums, like that kind of, kind of sound. It has a raw sound and the lyrics, they're basically just like three word sentences. So for example, the first verse is basically... Crumbler of time, dissolver of voids, keeper of the gravity, belter of planets. And that's basically like how the lyrics are composed. They end some clean riffs, a, and then they kind of make a little change of pace, then some like do metal style guitar riffs, and they bring back some of those galloping riffs, and those like galloping riffs seem like to be a little like shorter. And the song is about like four minutes and something, but it seems to like end like abruptly, like I feel like the song could have like went a little longer just to kind of like slow down and like kind of like close out the album, but it it just ends like it ends, and that's all. So my final thoughts, not that bad. I think it's a little better than Eternal Hails, actually. Um, my favorite songs were uh, Stalagmite Necklace and Eon 2, the last one. The production is raw as always, but maybe a little better. You know, the guitar is very like, you know, crisp and clear. The vocals are very low. The drums are like kind of in the middle. The bass, not really easy to hear, but you know, if you listen for it, you can hear it. And if I, I think if you're somebody who uh, you know likes the new direction of Dark Throne, you'll like this. If you're someone not familiar with black metal, it does have elements of like uh, black metal with doom and some classic metal. So it might be a good gateway because I think like for me, the previous album Eternal House was like my gateway to this band. So. You know, maybe check it out if you're not familiar with this type of music. And um, it's definitely a good album. So my final score, 8 out of 10. That is all. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. Thanks for watching. I have a couple more album reviews. Uh, Demon Hunter, Polyphia, Polyphia, however you pronounce that band. And uh, All right, see you next time.